Hello and welcome to Conversations, uh, a special series of uh, one to one on site in person interview that we record from around the world. Uh, and this time, and this season of conversation is coming from Abu Dhabi, where we are at the Tiaka Air Cargo Forum event. Uh, and with me today for this exclusive interview is uh, Milind Tavishka. Milind is the Chief Executive Officer of Smart Cargo. Milind, as always, a great pleasure to have you for this interview. Hello, Reddy. It's great to see you again. Melinda, uh, I know there's a lot going on mm -hmm. uh, with Smart Cargo. Mm -hmm. Bring us up to speed with uh, what is going on one by one. Oh, wow. Yeah, Let's, it's a lot of things, as you said. Um, since we spoke last, I think... Uh, the earlier big, this year. Yeah, earlier this year, I think we've been kind of working very deep into the buzzword area, which is obviously the AI area. Um, it seems like every every day you read about AI and it seems to be taking over the world. Uh, so we have a massive amount of resources right now deployed in that area as well. Um, and that's what we are excited about. Okay, since you mentioned about artificial intelligence, uh, that of course is not just a buzzword, it's a reality. It's become a yeah. fundamental to, to any business, any mm. individual human life around the world. Uh, yeah. uh, if you could uh, highlight some of the realistic case, uh, cases in which you are actually building capabilities for cargo airlines uh, around the world. Yeah, I think there are multiple use cases that we are building at this point. The amount of data that a transaction system or a system of records like Smart Cargo has collected over numerous years is enormous. Um, when you think about AI, there is a couple of things. One is just the algorithms that OpenAI or Google, Gemini, you know, all of those big companies have kind of engineered and developed. Um, and those are kind of commodity services. Anybody who has access to those and can use their credit card can claim to be yeah. AI enabled, right? Because those are services that you can consume. What's important is, you know, how to use those services in combination with the massive amount of data, business data that we hold as a part of our customer engagements and create in intelligence out of it. And that is the real outcome of using AI for the air cargo industry. That's what we have been kind of trying to do. Um, some very low hanging use cases yeah. are, are the obvious one was revenue management. Right? Yeah. We've been observing this industry for a while. Um, and because of the tools that are available now, it's become super easy to do it in a meaningful way. You know, um, so we have launched this product called AirCam, yeah. which is uh, built on top of this rich and kind of kosher database that we have, right? So there's no integration requirements. It builds on existing infrastructure it's just an additional layer that our customers are finding very useful in terms of optimizing their capacity for revenue or for load optimization and i think that's it used to take a lot of time and energy to develop those use cases in the past and a lot of integration effort a lot of data cleansing effort it was all offline because you know the ai or anything that you did in the past comparable was completely disjoint with your transaction system. So it did not really make sense for us, right? Okay. But now the tech has enabled us to do it real time. So it now feeds into decision support activity on a kind of transactional level. And that is a big difference. Okay, since you mentioned about AirCam, which is your uh, uh, AI tool for uh, cargo airlines, mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the recent announcements were yeah. the the Vietjet, uh, uh, mm -hmm. other, any other uh, uh, cargo airline or airlines which are actually using some uh, this particular yeah, product? So, I mean, every single carrier that we service today has access to this okay. add-on. Um, it's just a matter of adoption and very soon all of them will be using it. Uh, it's not a different product, right? Correct. It's just another switch on in the smart cargo system that they just need to start using and that's how I think we look at it. It's not a new space. It's just a additional feature that gets enabled when customers want to use it. Milan, when I look at uh, artificial intelligence, I, I look at three things. One is, of course, uh, revenue mm -hmm. management, optimization yeah. of your resources. 
uh, that's where you basically you are playing with uh, data that you collect over a period of time and how you actually uh, mm -hmm. use that data for uh, actionable insights. Yeah. Um, the, the third portion is of course the, the amount of cargo that is going to come as the Sure. commodity for uh, airlines uh, that of course is not really probably is, is not your your core competency um, what according to you in the long term is the the bigger product that probably you would bring in using artificial intelligence we are going beyond large language models to maybe uh, mm -hmm. something even bigger yeah yeah the the use cases that you just talked about are actually more related to machine learning Correct. than artificial intelligence right um, what we are doing is, you know, we are developing numerous agents that cater to different focus areas within cargo. So like a sales agent, what does a sales agent do is, you know, helps the sales team sell better and communicates with the sales team in natural language. So when the sales team is trying to sell space, it the system answers questions like, you know, hey, what rate do I need to sell a particular leg for mm. to become competitive? And the LLMs are commodities and they are using knowledge that is in the public domain to understand various different dynamics and then using past pattern data inside the smart cargo system to answer that question. So we are going to launch numerous agents like the sales agent, like the operational agent, like the accounting agent, like the support agent. And these agents are taking advantage of this powerful LLM models that have been built by the cloud service providers and are accessible. And then putting together our own design and engineering around those LLM models to produce usable intelligence. Because I mean, just doing a chatbot yeah. is not really that great i think that's commodity uh, what is cool is i think we are working with customers who are using technology for decision support real time uh, not in an offline manner right so think about like open ai mashed into a cargo database mm. um, and we do that like something very i think obvious is you know if if you hire a new batch of interns and you want to train them on air cargo today it's very hard to do that right so we have training agents where our batch of interns is using some of our own internal knowledge base to create self-learning uh, because each person is different yeah. and the ai module helps them answer their questions and says hey do you want more information yes or no can i help you with this or that and then it kind of drives you to completion um, in a more intelligent manner right so that's kind of good Milin, help me understand, uh, how do you bring an additional layer of uh, service on using AI? Because air cargo is dependent on geopolitics, it's dependent on global trade, mm -hmm. dependent on the changing trade lanes. Yeah. How do you bring that additional information layer into the, into the, into the solution that you're building for air cargo, for your customers? So I think air cargo is already a global service. I think, you know, when you think about most of the business for airlines in the air cargo space has remained international movement. Right? So the LLMs that are developed already account for that global exposure. You know, these LLMs are not restricting themselves from querying data from all over the world. So they understand trends from China into the US. What is the impact of tariffs on these trade lanes is something that LLMs have the knowledge for. What we do is, you know, we take that advantage of that work, which is done by the OpenAI guys or NVIDIA people who have the infrastructure out there. We are not going to be ever able to do that, right? Yeah. Because that infrastructure is multi-billion dollars. We take advantage of that and use it as a rented service, as an API, and then feed the SQLs that are generated by those services into our databases, which none of the open source has. Right. So they are missing this and this is missing that and we are the mash and we bring those together to create, you know, decision support systems. Milind, another important product that you have from Smart Cargo is the product for uh, e-commerce. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the ups and downs of uh, global uh, uh, cross-border e-commerce movement. Uh, uh, 
successful case uh, mm -hmm. is the Emirates uh, Sky Cargo's uh, rollout <laughs> earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, I believe you're working on many more such things. Uh, given the kind of uh, the ups and downs that we have seen in the global cross-border e-commerce, uh, where do you see the future for cross-border e-commerce and the particular direction of the of the product that you're building for uh, for e-commerce? Uh, have you seen the beautiful Airbus 380 that Emirates painted with Courier Express? Correct. Oh yes. wow! What a what a kind of sight to watch, right? When yeah. it's in the air. They just announced Germany as the new. They market. announced Germany and are rolling out in more than 100 countries. Good. Uh, but that's exactly what technology can do to change the footprint of an air cargo business. Uh, we are making these really sleepy air cargo businesses compete with the really fast track FedExes and the UPSs of the world. Um, and not just compete, but be better. Uh, we are bringing, bringing that real time solution uh, into a very disjoint fragmented supply chain uh, so with the help of of smart cargo airlines now can can claim to have the same level of agility same level of integration uh, that any integrator system can provide to the marketplace and shippers are always looking for the lowest price and the fastest transit time solution and with passenger flights going multiple times from point A to point B um, and already the spend is accounted for for passengers you know uh, it creates an opportunity for airlines to to increase their you know revenue per seat mile if you want to translate cargo revenue into a a per seat mile yeah. metric right? exactly. because I think ultimately that's what they are reporting to their stakeholders on you know how are we doing with our revenue per seat mile or cost per seat mile and both of these metrics are impacted very heavily by utilization of cargo space so that's what kind of we are doing to change the industry Melinda I want to end uh, this conversation uh, asking if you're at liberty uh, in terms of what we can expect from smart cargo in the <laughs> next uh, six months to one year is there anything that you can share with us in terms of a pure news piece yeah, I think, you know, we we are going to kind of interconnect the world. We have already started with some of the bigger carriers um, in the Middle East. Um, there are others who are taking inspiration from the success um, of what we have experienced in domestic e-commerce markets with um, Azul Airlines, with, uh, with Delta in the United States, uh, with Emirates now in UAE. Uh, and there are some large integrate uh, large airlines which have global networks which are doing the same type of solution but in different markets because each one of them has a different strength in terms of geographical presence and capacity that they fly uh, and the smart cargo solution is kind of becoming more popular around the world um, which allows them and us to monetize the space so stay tuned i think you know we are uh, going to potentially become the largest and the most dominant e-commerce enabler for the air cargo industry in future. Is Asia becoming a, a key market region for you? It is, you know, I mean, Asia is the supply of the world, right? I think, you know, it's you can't ignore traffic from Asia into the Western world because the demand markets are always going to remain in the US, right? Um, the world produces and the US consumes is kind of the, the tagline here. So, and the production houses are all in Asia, you know, and it's different kinds for different things. Like pharmaceuticals have a very heavy India slant, apparel footwear has a heavy South Asia or East Asia, you know, slant. And, and of course, China is kind of the powerhouse in all general cargo or e-commerce merchandise. And those are the feeders to the US, Canada, Europe, uh, all, also South America. So I think these two trade lanes have a lot of e-commerce activity that we are seeing. And we have customers in all of those trade lanes, which we are now interconnecting and creating this global play. Milind Travishka, Chief Executive Officer, Smart Cargo. Milind, as always, a great pleasure to have you for this conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Reggie. Take care.